Have we run out of exotic frontiers? I mean, exotic is a very relative and archaic term, but looking at it from a western perspective, it does seem like every distant biome has already been thoroughly explored. Those European explorers must have known how lucky they were to sail to far-off Pacific islands on the opposite side of the globe, discovering, big quotations, all this wonderful stuff. They must have thought, well, we did it boys, it can't get much more otherworldly and remote than this. Uh, fortunately, they were wrong. There is still a far-flung frontier of enigmatic environments and organisms, it's just much less of a paradise, to the point where unlike the supposedly undiscovered lands of the New World, the scientists who have studied them will really be the first people to do so. Today we will look at the poles of our planets, where underneath layers of ice exist the bizarre world of subglacial lakes. To give you an idea of how concealed these lakes were from humanity, they were theorized to have existed before we actually had physical evidence of them. Only by the end of the 19th century, when the globe had been thoroughly explored, were the ideas of subglacial lakes proposed by Peter Kropotkin, a man famous for this and nothing else. Kropotkin predicted that at a certain point near the bottom of glaciers, the pressure generated by the glaciers would be so immense that the temperature would actually increase. Eventually, the temperature would reach above the melting point of ice, and thus a subglacial lake was born. Turns out he had it basically on the dot, but it still took another eight decades for his hypothesis to begin to be proven. Another Russian scientist named Kapista first discovered unusual seismic data while measuring the Antarctic ice sheet near Vostok Station. Yet the world would have to wait another three decades when, in the 1990s, a paper published by a team of Russians and British finally legitimized the existence of a subglacial lake, named Lake Vostok. Why did this take us so long? Well, it's not like they're incredibly rare. In Antarctica alone, we have now discovered over 400 of these lakes. They aren't small, either. Lake Vostok is the sixth largest lake by volume in the world and covers an area of 12,500 square kilometers. It just turns out all of that ice really gets in the way. For how big Lake Vostok is, the reason it took us so long to even spot it is because it's covered by a layer of ice four kilometers thick. Four kilometers! That's about five Burj Khalifa stacked on top of each other, or 130 blue whales, or, get this, 4,000 meter sticks. You can't mock the scientific community for missing these lakes at first, although now that we've actually found them, researching them is maybe an even more difficult task. All that ice creates quite a problem. It's part of the Antarctic Ice Sheet, a giant blanket of ice that covers the gnarled bedrock of the continent. Just eyeballing it, it looks about mm, 2.5 quadrillion metric tons in weight, and this creates immense pressure, which as discussed before is what causes these lakes to form in the first place. High pressure also means that the water will explode out of any possible hole in the ice sheet. That explosion is called a yokohlup, I think. So not only do you have to bore through thousands of meters of ice using some sort of drilling device, but the water may damage any device with a violent enough yokohlup, and cause even more trouble by immediately refreezing on your pressure's technology. It's for these reasons that after many attempts, only three drilling attempts ever actually made it to a subglacial lake. The first two of these, however, failed because they ended up contaminating the lake water with drilling fluid. The first successful one, which might I add was only completed in 2013, finally was able to bore to a subglacial lake named Lake Willens, and some of our first understandings of these ecosystems were revealed. What's actually down there? Lake Willens, mind you, is only about 2 meters deep of water and is completely without any sunlight. Sunlight, mind you, is pretty integral to any environment most of us can name. As I described in my video about caves, no sunlight equals no photosynthesizing autotrophs, which usually equals nothing else being able to survive. So there isn't exactly a safari down there. In fact, the only life exists at the microscopic level. Of course, the fact life even exists down there at all is impressive, and the level of life is way more miraculous than the researchers expected. Their data listed 4,000 different species in Lake Willen. The producers of subglacial lakes are single-cell organisms known as chemoautotrophs, who instead of producing energy from sunlight, feed off of compounds from the lithosphere. These chemicals, like sulfur, iron, and nitrogen, are broken down by chemoautotrophs. These producers then produce organic carbon, which is nutrients for heterotrophic bacteria. The carbon can also hypothetically support eukaryotic life, which the team was unable to test for, and thus we have an ecosystem. Of course, that's just a simplified version of it. For instance, methane cycling also exists in these lakes. 
Organisms that produce methane, known as methanogens, will produce nutrients for organisms that feed off methane, methylobacter. These methane-consuming bacteria seem to be a driving force in the ecosystem, consuming 99% of the methane released. Don't be fooled. This environment is incredibly harsh on all of its occupants. The heterotrophs living in the lake had to spend a majority of their carbon just maintaining their health instead of growth and multiplying, which sort of goes against the entire mantra of bacteria. In a lot of ways, the bacteria found in this environment share similarities with the various other extremophile communities on Earth. The comparison that comes to mind is the chemotrophs of deep sea volcanic vents, who in complete darkness feed off the fumes of the abyss. Both of these communities also help scientists gauge how life could survive in maybe the greatest frontier of all, space. On moons in our own solar system, such as Jupiter's moon Europa, similar situations exist. Far from the sun's life-giving rays, Europa is covered in a thick sheet of ice, where underneath exists a bed of water. Is it possible life could have evolved similarly underneath the icy surface of the Earth's poles in Jupiter's moons? Speaking of evolution, these ecosystems present an interesting understanding of biology on Earth. Think, these little bacteria have been basically locked up in some lakes for literally millions of years, away from not only sunlight and the atmosphere, but the rest of the global ecosphere. In isolation, they have evolved without any outside interference, creating potentially one-of-a-kind, distinctive organisms. Of course, how distinctive a bacterium can be, I have no idea. But the differences will probably be incredibly profound to people much smarter than us. Also, don't forget all of this research has come from just Lake Willen. There are still those 400 other lakes in the South Pole, and an unknown amount in the North. We have not even properly explored the massive Lake Vostok. Just think that if Willen was only 2 meters deep, what environment could be found in Vostok's 800 meter depth? The ecology of Willen is also not constant across the other lakes. So much varies in subglacial waters, from volume to contact with outside water sources like the ocean, to oxidation levels and chemical sources, that life has almost certainly adapted differently in undiscovered lakes. So yeah, we have way more to learn about these lakes. Although information, for now, is not the most complete, that only means a new frontier has opened up, and there is potential for some incredible discoveries in subglacial lakes. In the ensuing decades, we may find answers to life on and off the Earth in these remarkable environments. Thanks for watching. This video is one of my more experimental, focusing on essentially no zoology whatsoever. I hope you all still enjoy it. Thanks for the photos, videos, artwork I used to make this. Thank you for watching. See ya.